I said to you yesterday, we'll go through a structure, ring structure of the surahs. And I want to first explain what I mean by ring structure. And I, I told you when we write, uh, when we read our textbooks, we find that every chapter is organized in what we call a linear, Aristotelian linear fashion. Okay, Aristotle's philosophy was, you know, to think linearly. That is how philosophers think, in a linear way. Okay, one, two, leads to three, <coughs> three leads to the four. So you have, first you have your title. You know, in that title you make a proposition. You put a statement, okay? And then you have an introduction to that statement, okay? Then you get evidence to prove what your proposition was in the heading, all right? Then you do a discussion of that, okay? Once you've done the discussion, you come to a <coughs> conclusion, don't you? That is how we write chapters, that is how we write books, and that is how we think linearly. Is that, is every, every, you're all familiar with that. That's what our wonderful British education system does in English, uh, Navid. That's what you get them to do. Good essay writing is all about that. You know, I can still remember, you know, when I was in my, I think it was eight or nine year old in primary school. And, uh, you know, if, if I repeated words, I would be told off, you know, told how to write, you know, the, in, in, in the uh, discussion, uh, in, in the body of the writing, you know do all the so you know early on we, we we are taught to think linearly and alhamdulillah you know by the people when they finish their degrees they can think in that linear aristotelian way okay and analyze things and do so we're all used to that and what are we doing in the quran we are looking for that linearity and alas you don't find it so you get confused and you say oh what is Quran doing, eh? It's just moving from one place to another. What is it doing, eh? Makes no sense. <coughs> Thus, we've never felt like that. <coughs> you've not read translation, I bet. <laughs> like most of us, let me be honest. I'm sorry to be rude, Jan, but this is what I know. Muslims just don't, haven't, very few people will have read <laughs> whole translation and, and for a very good reason, you know. Uh, well, yes, you? absolutely. Yes, you're right. Uh, you know, you, you're right. Uh, and uh, so, uh, during Ramadan in uh, one of our Crimea masjid, um, uh, during the eighth half, about 25 young people decided we would read the whole of majestic Quran from beginning to end in the last 10 days. Okay, and there was one who was 45 year old, and he said, "Dr. Sab, I've got this pile of translations at home. I've not read any of them, but this one, when they finished it on the 10th day." Uh, on last day of Ramadan, they called me. So I went and did a dua, and he said, you know, mashallah, you know, we read the whole of the majestic Quran from beginning to the end. Not only the translation, but the Arabic. So they would read the one page of Arabic, <coughs> then the translation, then, and in 10 days of uh, Etqaf, they finished the whole of the Quran, mashallah. And so, you know, the point is, what I'm saying is, you know, we s s seldom read translation. I do encourage you, I urge you, in fact, that you must get used to doing that, all right? So, so what do we mean uh, by so ring structure? This? You understand how, what the linear structure is you're all familiar with? Yeah. Okay, so what is the ring structure? Well, this is your uh, uh, Aristotelian linear writing method. Next, go. So there's a you know, very learned scholar called Mary Douglas. She's an expert on this thinking circle, an essay on ring composition. She began to talk about ring structure and other people have actually talked about this in Bible. Books of Bible are ring structure, all right? They're not linear uh, and, uh, and in fact some of the other writings by um, Greek ph uh, philosophers, uh, not philosophers, but Greek uh, writers are also in, in this ring structure, okay? And uh, for me this corresponds to what Razi and other commentators talk about, how the beginning and the end are linked together. Often, you know, they write, see how the end is as it was at the beginning? Think of it like a circle or a ring, okay? If you've got a ring, you know, just think about a ring there, no? Uh, a mirror image, A, B, C, D, and A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, okay? A, A prime, B, B, you know, like a lateral inversion in a mirror, okay? It's just like a lateral inversion, actually. So the books of Bible were like that. Rumi's Masnavi is a very good, I, I, I read a lot of Masnavi and 
particularly uh, the translation by Arbery and also translation by Javed, you know, um, an Iranian, very beautiful translation. And you can again tell Rumi is using exactly the ring structure. Because it's, have you noticed, you know, he, he gives you, a, he starts with a story, and then after a few paragraphs, he moves off <laughs> to another story, and then a third one, and then a fourth one, and you say, he hasn't finished the first one, what's he doing? And then he comes up, and he talks about the first one, and then the second one, but there's a, there's a really, it's, it's just like, you know, when you watch dramas, they don't tell you the whole story, do they? What's it called? Suspense, isn't it? So they'll show you a, and, and they'll leave it at a very dramatic point, and you're just wondering what is going to happen next. Eh? They start another scene, eh? and then comes another. Perhaps later on, after another four different scenes, you get a, the first one, you know, the end of the first one. That, that's a very like ring structure. Everybody knows Ayatul Kursi well, don't you? And I, I, I've made it a practice in our Quran schools that. If, when children are around, we always read Ayat al-Kursi aloud, okay? It's a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Not to read loud, but certainly we read it loud because I want to teach children, okay? Just to get them into practice and habit. Being a good teacher, you know, we have to practice all these things. Otherwise, they wouldn't know, you know, just saying to them, read Ayat al-Kursi is not good. You read it with them loud, okay? So that's why even here, you know, we read it. We want people to learn through practical ways. So we, yeah, we read Ayat al-Kursi, and I hope all of you know this. Uh, no, let's just look at Ayat al-Kursi. How many parts does Ayat al-Kursi have? Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm. Lahu ma fi s-samawati wa ma fi l-ard. Man dha al-lathi yishfaw indahu illa bi-idhni. Ya'alamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا يَعُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ How many parts does it have? Hasnan? Oh, you're just copying, aren't you? <laughs> you're copying. Come on. How many parts does it have? <laughs> Nine, yeah. Nine parts, nine parts. Yeah. Just look at it, it's amazing, you know. Okay, so what do we find amazing in it? Can you see this? There is no God but He. Al Hay, Al Qayyum, Al Ali, Al Azim. He is the living, the one who sustains and keeps things in existence, and the one who is the highest, exalted, and the great, okay? Uh, 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 you know, tired, uh, not tiredness, this is a slumber, drowsiness, or sleep, doesn't hold him, or the, um, uh, so drowsiness and sleep doesn't overwhelm him, okay? And here, وَلَا يَعُودُهُ Okay, حِفْزُهُمَا the, um, the, it, it, it does not overwhelm him from its protection. Okay, what? سِنَةٌ وَلَا نَوْمٌ Okay, and then, the, everything in heavens and the earth belongs to him. And his throne of authority extends over heaven and the earth. And this could have been there, couldn't it? Here. Shamrez. Lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Wasi'a kursiyuhu samawati wa al-ard. Could have been there, couldn't it? Molan Zubair? It would have made sense. It would have made sense, wouldn't it? It is continuous, okay? Um, Heavens and the earth belong to him, and his his throne, or let's very simple, his authority extends over them. He has authority over all of them, Jehanna. Who dare intercede before him, Jehanna, without his or without his permission? And here, um, you know, the 
ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه الا بما شاء they don't know they don't know anything except what he, in other words how could they do the intercession they don't really know how can they be interceding for somebody and they don't re- really know the reality of what he is capable or what he deserves you don't know because they don't know they see that and then ya'lamu ma bayna aydihi wa khalfahum he knows what they've achieved and what they have failed to achieve you know normally people translate this as literal meaning would be he knows what's in front of them and what Abdullah ibn Abbas in his tafsir Miqyasul Anwar says this actually is a metaphor for what they have achieved and what they have failed to do did you see that that's a very it's used as a as, as a and it's far more meaningful isn't it what they've achieved and what they failed to achieve and that's I I'm giving you an evidence from Abdullah ibn Abbas so that's why I use that although in my second edition I think we just still have it as he knows what is in front and what's behind them but it really means Allah knows what they've achieved and what they have failed to achieve okay okay next go on to the can you see this can you see this parallelism between the four and what's in the middle this one with that this here this here and this is the crown he knows what they've achieved and what they have you know ayatul kursi is really about the the, the uh, allah's authority okay and his knowledge and his greatness um but uh, at the same time it's about making us aware of our responsibility because that's uh, you know at, at the heart of the quran is always what have you done what have you achieved all right wait, wait a minute just just any questions on that and does everybody see that link that parallelism do you see that now that even more clear why we call this ring so the the diamond is is the central <coughs> theme okay and what did we say here the central theme would be it, it's what we do and what we fail to achieve is what the quran is stressing here look you're standing in front of this mighty lord the, the lord of who has authority over the whole of the universe eh what what you achieved or what you have failed to achieve does that make sense okay and listen you know some of you will be wondering is it exactly or are we just stretching things eh you know don't worry about that it's you know whether this is a right theory or wrong it, it, that's not the point the point is it's just helping us to understand and and see some link are, are you with me okay it's, it's, it doesn't have to be perfectly like that our human understanding is weak only allah knows the best are, are you with me so don't don't say this is a some kind of a we, we, we're saying that this is the only way of studying the quran all right and surahs adalat are you with me yeah. so it's not about it's just it's an approach that i like and i've i've read about it and i've seen some fantastic examples in my own translation and we'll just look at surah yasin in a while and yes, we'll see you know when you look at yeah. um, s- s- th- that structure you just wonder you know the quran was revealed over the period of 23 years and rasulullah sallallahu didn't have laptops and uh, you know digital <laughs> cut and paste uh, you know facilities in those days so can you just imagine how this would have been preserved and this is proof of the divine nature of the book and how allah says nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun so you really need to understand that and the, the sophisticated ring structure that we just talked about even in in surah bakra which was revealed over a period of how many years you see an amazing ring structure there to be honest okay Uh, i i i have that but i'm not going it's, it's really long it take almost a whole day to actually go through surah bakra is amazing and so it would be very impossible you know for rasulullah sallallahu alaihi or the sahaba then to say okay we're going to organize it in this ring structure or in this particular fashion you know it just shows you this is a divine book of which allah took care of pre- presenting us fa tabiru ya ulil absar you know the quran says you know just oh clever people 